UKIP. Uh, it's been a very long road to get to this point. Uh, I have to say, with some degree of pride, uh, that without us, this referendum would never, ever have happened. It is in many ways our referendum. And I think we've changed the political agenda, not just uh, for the vote coming tomorrow, but I suspect you've changed it for the foreseeable future. We've even changed the political language. I've heard people talking about Australian-style point systems. I've heard people saying, will the David, real David Cameron please stand up? I've heard people talking about the number of German cars on our roads and French cheese and wine in our shops. Um, I've even heard people talking about Independence Day and the banner, the banner that we've been standing on now for a very long time, believe in Britain, um, appears now to have gained widespread use. I think for all of us in UKIP, uh, and I certainly include myself in this, it has at times been a long and quite lonely and difficult road, but I'm enormously proud of the way in which we managed to change British politics, and I hope it reaps a huge dividend for our nation tomorrow. <laughs> now, there's a lot of talk, a lot of sound and fury about what will happen economically, what will happen in terms of immigration numbers, whether we stay or leave this club. But nobody in this campaign has really talked about the club, has really talked about what the European Union really is. And just think back. The last referendum on this, 41 years ago, uh, the British public were told that they were being asked to vote to remain in a common market. A common market about trade, be good for the economy, nothing to do with politics at all, because of course we could veto things or opt out of things. And the referendum in 2016 has taken a very similar trajectory. Because the Remain camp talk endlessly about the single market, the biggest free trade zone in the whole of the world. And whenever a question is asked about further political integration, about perhaps a European army, about one of David Cameron's lifetime political dreams of Turkey possibly joining, we're told, no, 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 don't worry about that. We've got a veto or we've got an opt-out. They tried the Remain side to use the term single market in exactly the same way as they used the term common market 40 years ago. We are not, folks, part of a free trade zone. That is not what it is. It is a customs union, or perhaps in simple English, a big business cartel. Now, we joined this originally for the benefit of not having tariffs, high tariffs, as they were in the olden days, with our European neighbours. But now we find ourselves inside this customs union where the regulations that are made affect the 88% of the British economy that does not and never has traded with our European neighbours. We find ourselves, for the benefit of tariff-free trade, having to accept unlimited free movement of people. We find ourselves prohibited from making our own deals with the rest of the world. And for all of this, and for a trade deficit in excess of 60 billion pounds a year, we pay a membership fee. And this point, by the way, is not contentious. Our net membership fee is 34 million pounds a day. The, the benefits of not having those now relatively tiny tariffs are far outweighed by our current costs being part of this single market. But of course, the real agenda isn't about the economy. The real agenda is political. We are members of a political union. European law is supreme. The European Court of Justice overrules our parliament and our courts. And yet, and this is the last time in this campaign I'm gonna do this, but we don't even have a British passport anymore. All right, we've got a European Union Which, of course, is available.
for up to 508 million people. And let's stop pretending what this European project is. They have an anthem. They're building an army. They've already got their own police force. And of course, they've got a flag. And at the end of the day tomorrow when people vote, they must make a decision. Which flag is theirs? And I want, I want us to live under British passports and under the British flag. I tell you something, if this referendum tomorrow was about joining the European Union, given those costs that I've outlined, I think we would overwhelmingly reject it. So who are those supporting our continued membership of the Union? Who are the Remain side? Well, some are the dreamers, generally of an older political generation, people who believed in the European project from day one, people like Lord Heseltine, who still very unapologetically says he looks forward to the day when Britain joins the Euro. Uh, but they, in reality, are very few in number. Now, the Remain side, really, is about the vested interests, the big corporate businesses, who for the first time in history are able, through the European Commission, to effectively write the rules for their own businesses to the detriment of their small and medium-sized competitors. And of course, there's almost an entire political and bureaucratic class in favour of all of this. After all, there are 10,000 people working for the European institutions in Brussels who earn more than David Cameron. If you're part of that set, What's not to like? And then, of course, there's Mr. Cameron. He's a Remainer. And incidentally, I don't know if anybody can tell me where the leader of Britain Stronger in Europe is. I haven't seen Lord Rose uh, now for some weeks. Perhaps he was just simply too honest when he told the Parliamentary Select Committee that if we left the European Union, that workers' wages in Britain would go up. Mr. Cameron wants you to remain. He told you he was going to get a great deal for this country. He got very little. He came back insisting that it's legally enforceable. It is not. And I expect that if we were to side with Mr Cameron tomorrow, the European Parliament would begin unpicking that deal before the summer recess. And today he makes yet another, frankly, dishonest pitch to the public when he tells us that if we vote to remain, we're voting for further reform. Mrs Thatcher, at the height of her powers, was incapable of reforming the political direction of the European Union. Tony Blair, who said at the start of his six months presidency of the EU that he would turn the Union around, failed completely to do it, and surrendered much of our rebate. The word reform in Brussels, ladies and gentlemen, means something different. It means a greater deeper drive towards centralisation, a deeper commitment to fulfilling the dreams of the original founders, the fulfilment of the United States of Europe. That is what it's all about. So this referendum is actually quite simple. This referendum is the people versus the establishment. And one of the enduring images uh, that I shall keep from this referendum is when I tried to give Britain's ailing fishing industry the opportunity to give voice to what has happened to their communities by taking their small flotilla up the Thames. And I thought the sight of a multi-millionaire former rock star um, shouting abuse, making a variety of hand gestures, some of which got published in the papers and some didn't, um, and not directed just at me, that would have been okay, but directed at our fishermen. That image for me says it all. Uh, that actually it's the best in interest, it's the rich, it's the, bus it's the big business, it's those who are doing very nicely thank you against pretty much everybody else. We can do better than this. Tomorrow we can vote for real change. Tomorrow we can vote to put power back in the hands of people. We can vote to take control of our country back. We can vote to get our borders back. We can vote to get our pride and self-respect as a nation and in who we are as a people back. I want us tomorrow to vote for Britain to become independent. I want us to vote for us to become democratic. I want us to vote for us to become a normal country because normal countries make their own laws. 
Normal countries are in charge of their destiny and their future. If you've never voted before because you think voting won't change anything, then tomorrow is your opportunity to make a difference. Go out and do it. Vote with your heart. Vote with your soul. Vote with pride in this country and its people. And together, we can make tomorrow our Independence Day, a big day in our national history, a day that is good for us, and a day that is good for the rest of Europe too, because other nations will follow us. I believe the passion and commitment is on our side of the argument. I believe that most of our voters would crawl over broken glass to get down to that polling station tomorrow, but we need the others. We need the people who agree on the street, or in the pub, or in the cafe. We need them, the non-voters, to go out and vote for their country tomorrow. I'm optimistic that they're going to do it. It may be tight, it may be narrow, but I genuinely believe we are going to win this. Thank you. And the banner, the banner that we've been standing on now for a very long time, Believe in Britain, um, appears now to have gained widespread use. I think for all of us in UKIP, uh, and I certainly include myself in this, it has at times been a long and quite lonely and difficult road. But I'm enormously proud of the way in which we managed to change British politics, and I hope it reaps a huge dividend for our nation tomorrow. A political union. European law is supreme. The European Court of Justice overrules our Parliament and our courts. And yet, and this is the last time in this campaign I'm going to do this, but we don't even have a British passport anymore. All right, we've got a European Union. Which, of course, is available for up to 508 million people. And let's stop pretending what this European project is. They have an anthem. They're building an army. They've already got their own police force. And of course, they've got a flag. And at the end of the day tomorrow, when people vote, they must make a decision. Which flag is theirs? And I want, I want us to live under British passports and under the British flag. I don't think there's much point moaning about it, frankly. I think we have to accept the cards that we've been dealt. Um, and I think despite of all of those things, you know, we are in with a very good chance of winning this tomorrow. Uh, you ask what will happen if Remain wins by a whisker. Well, I would say this, that uh, any calls, any demands for a second referendum uh, would come up against a pretty big obstacle. And that obstacle is called the House of Commons, where a lot of people regret ever giving the British people an opportunity to have this say. For me personally, I don't know of a single example where being governed by a distant oligopoly has worked out successfully.